what types of lens implant are available in the U.S. for cataract surgery and refractive lens exchange surgery? How are they different? Which one should you choose for your eyes? To learn more, keep watching. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Audrey Tai. I'm a board certified and fellowship trained cataract and refractive surgeon, ophthalmologist and cornea specialist. Welcome back to my channel, I channel by eye surgeon. I'm here to bring you the latest information on eye health and medicine. In today's video, I'll review lens implant options for cataract and refractive lens exchange or RLE surgeries. Both eye surgeries involve removing the natural crystalline lens and replacing it with an artificial lens implant. We can call both types of surgeries lens implant surgery. Whether you're thinking about having cataract surgery to restore your vision or are considering RLE surgery to treat presbyopia, aka the aging process of the eyes that causes you to require reading glasses, and are looking to find out what lens implant options are available. I hope you will find this video helpful to learn more about lens implant options and how to choose the right one for you. To learn all about what is refractive lens exchange surgery and presbyopia treatment options, you can watch this video. Say goodbye to reading glasses, refractive lens exchange. In general, there are three lens implant types available. Basic single vision implants, single vision astigmatism correcting implants, and presbyopia correcting implants. The range of vision each type of implant corrects is different. Before we talk about the available implant options, it is important to understand the three different zones of vision and how glasses prescriptions are written for correcting each zone of vision. There are three zones of vision. Distance vision, seeing things more than 20 feet away, such as reading the road signs when driving or reading the captions when watching TV. Intermediate vision, seeing objects at arm's length around 24 inches, like using a desktop computer or reading the gauge on a car dashboard. And near vision, like reading small prints up close around 12 to 16 inches, reading text on a cell phone or reading a book. For most of us who don't have perfect vision, we typically require some correction to one or more zones of our vision. There are four common vision conditions that require glasses. The first one is nearsightedness or myopia, where things are more clear up close than far away. This is the opposite of farsightedness or hyperopia. This is when things are more clear far away than up close. The third condition is called astigmatism, which means that the curvature of the windshield of the eye, the cornea, is not round. The cornea should be shaped like a basketball, but in people with astigmatism, it is shaped more like American football, which causes you to see a slight shadowy or ghost image next to the main image without correction. And the last vision condition is called presbyopia meaning a progressive increase in the need of reading glasses to see small prints up close. Presbyopia usually starts after about age 40 to 45 and gradually gets worse over time. You can think about having lens implant surgery as putting the glasses prescription in the eyes instead of an external lens in a glasses frame. If you take a look at the written glasses prescription that your eye doctor gave you, you can see that there are three or four different sets of numbers on the prescription. It is typically written like this. Sometimes there is a numeric value in the add section as the fourth value. The first number indicates how nearsighted or farsighted your eye is. In this prescription, this person has three diopters of nearsightedness. The second and third numbers indicate how much astigmatism there is and at what meridian the astigmatism is aligned. In this prescription, this person has two diopters of astigmatism aligned at 90 degree perpendicular to the 180 degree. The fourth number in the add section, if present, indicates the strength of reading glasses prescription, aka presbyopia. The basic single vision implant, also called monofocal implant, only corrects the first number of the glasses prescription. This means it corrects the nearsightedness or farsightedness of the prescription, but
but it does not correct astigmatism or reading glasses prescription. So if your eye has astigmatism and you choose to have basic single vision lens implant, you will still need either glasses or contact lenses or refractive surgery, such as LASIK surgery, after the lens implant surgery in order to correct the astigmatism to see clearly both far away and up close. With monofocal lenses, you do have the option of selecting a target vision zone. It could be any of the three zones, but the other two zones will be blurry without correction. But it doesn't matter which target you choose, you will need some type of correction, either glasses or contact lenses to see clearly in the zones of vision you didn't choose to correct. Hence, the implants are called single vision implants. Let's say if you choose a basic single vision implant and you choose to have as clear as possible distance vision without glasses, that means you still need reading glasses for presbyopia correction to read small prints up close. And if you have a significant amount of stigmatism, you will need glasses or contact lenses to correct astigmatism in order to see clearly after the surgery for both distance and near vision. So I tell my patients, if your eyes don't have a lot of astigmatism and you don't mind wearing glasses to read small prints, such as cell phones, books, or the gauges on the dashboard when driving, basic single vision implant may be right for you. The second option is called single vision astigmatism correcting lens implant or toric implant. A toric implant will correct the first three sets of numbers on a glasses prescription. In this case, the toric implant will correct nearsightedness of three diopters and two diopters of astigmatism. But because it is a single vision implant, you will still have to choose either set your vision to be more clear to see things far away or set it to see things clearer up close. I often recommend this toric lens option for people who have significant astigmatism and would like to reduce but not eliminate the need of glasses after the surgery. For example, someone who has astigmatism and chooses to have a toric lens implant and decides to set his vision clarity for distance vision, the person will only need to wear reading glasses to read, but not when watching TV or playing sports. The third option is called a presbyopia correcting lens implant or multifocal and extended depth of focus lens implant. This lens option is the most advanced lens implant. Instead of only targeting a single vision zone, such as either distance or near vision correction, a presbyopia correcting lens implant can provide a much wider range of clear vision, hence the term multifocal. Typically, the implant has a set of concentric rings on the implant. So the different zones of the limb plant have different strengths of correction in order to correct distance, intermediate, and near vision. This type of implant corrects all four sets of numbers on a glasses prescription, nearsightedness or farsightedness, astigmatism, and presbyopia or reading vision. The goal of the presbyopia correcting implant is to significantly reduce the need of glasses after surgery at multiple distances. Degree of presbyopia or reading vision correction is different for each multifocal and EDOF lens implant, depending on each person's need for reading vision correction. However, presbyopia correcting lens implants are not for everyone. They require the retina layer of the nerve tissue inside of the eyes to be healthy, meaning people who have significant eye diseases such as macular degeneration, significant glaucoma, or significant diabetic eye disease are not a good candidate for presbyopia correcting lens implant. Also, there's a slightly increased risk of more glares at night and a slight decrease in contrast sensitivity with presbyopia correcting implants. So it is very important for you to discuss with your eye surgeon to see if presbyopia correcting implant is right for you. No matter which type of lens implant you choose for your lens implant surgery, it is very important for you to have an individual consultation with your eye surgeon as the lens implant placed during surgery typically stays permanently in the eye. It determines whether you need glasses or how often you need glasses after surgery. And that could determine how well you see for decades of your lifetime. Therefore, every patient 
needs a personalized surgical plan to customize their vision correction with surgery individually. One thing to know is that sadly in the US, health insurance companies typically only cover the first option, the basic single vision lens implant. And there's a typically an out of pocket expense for the other advanced implants. Make sure you understand both your lens implant options and your insurance coverage prior to a lens implant surgery. If you're interested in learning more about the steps of both conventional cataract surgery and laser assisted cataract surgery, you can check out this video, laser cataract surgery versus conventional cataract surgery. What is the difference? Have you had either cataract surgery or RLE surgery or planning on having either surgery? Please let me know which lens implant you have or would choose for yourself in the comments below. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have learned anything new, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Because if you click that subscribe button, you will help give me the opportunity to continue to bring free videos about eye health and eye surgery to the world. Anytime you don't have 10 minutes, you can watch short fun videos about eye care tips on Instagram at Dr. Audrey Tai. You can also follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn at Dr. Audrey Tai to learn more about my practice. I look forward to connecting with you there. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in my next video.